Well, good morning. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of us as we gather once again to worship God together in this different and new way. I think I'm going to develop a, a new routine for us because we can't shake hands or uh, be close to each other, but I think we can uh, wave to each other. So what I'm going to ask is for the people who are at home, who are watching online, uh, I know that might be embarrassing for you, but you could wave to the screen and everyone else inside, if you want to, to wave to each other and to, to welcome each other, that'd be good. Welcome. Superb. I want to begin with a bit of an apology. Uh, on Wednesday evening service had to be cancelled for technical reasons. I'm so sorry about that. But this Wednesday, we're back on here at St John's at uh, 7.30pm. So uh, if you know anyone that wants to come uh, to the church on Wednesday evening uh, at 7.30, please, uh, please do so. This morning we're going to begin by saying together that wonderful prayer that Jesus Christ taught the, the Lord's Prayer. So if you would, if you would, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. At our last service we were speaking about the fact uh, that we can't sing uh, during worship. And it's interesting, I've been speaking to a number of people over the past week or so, um, and the comments about being back uh, and being online uh, are really positive and really good. But one of the real sadnesses is that we cannot sing together. Uh, and if I'm being honest, it's probably the thing that I'm missing the most. Wouldn't it be great if I was to turn around to say, let's all be upstanding now and sing whatever hymn we're going to do. So I thought what we would do this morning, because we can uh, sing hymns, I thought what we would do is I'm going to ask Ian to play a hymn and I'm, I'm not allowed to sing it. There's no solo involved, okay? But I, I will speak the words, okay, as Ian plays. It is one of the most famous hymns ever written and actually it was a request this week uh, after the announcement that we would be doing this. Um, it's that incredible hymn, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, um, written by John Newton, uh, who lived from 1725 until the early, uh, I think it was 1807 uh, that he died. So this hymn has been around for a, a, a good time. So I'm going to ask Ian to give me an introduction and I will speak it. And if you want to in your mind, you can perhaps be giving it loudly in your mind, singing out loud in your mind.
amazing grace. There is a line in that hymn that speaks about God's word giving us hope. In fact, in God's word, our hope is secured. And so we are going to continue this Sunday with the, the theme that we've been following for some weeks let now, both here in the sanctuary and online, when we've been speaking about this remarkable man, Peter. Remember the stories over the past few weeks that we have uh, heard about the story of Peter. We know Peter was one of Jesus' closest friends, a disciple, an apostle. We know he was the one who jumped in, didn't he? When there was a situation or whatever, he, he, he was just so, uh, I suppose the, word, the only word that comes to my mind once again is gallus, you know? I mean, he was always there first. He was always the first to give an answer. He was the one who wanted to please, who wanted to do. He was the one last week, we'll remember, when uh, we read the passage about Jesus and his disciples in Caesarea Philippi. He was the one who, when Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. He was the one who walked in the water when Jesus said, come. So for Peter, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. And last week's passage where uh, Jesus commended Peter because Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. The very next verse in Matthew's gospel tells another story of Peter and of Jesus. And it's remarkable. I'm actually going to, <coughs> excuse me, read to you from Matthew's Gospel, continuing in the, from that passage. But I'm going to read to you from the, the version of the Bible that's known as the Message. Uh, the Message is a, a modern translation by the theologian Eugene Peterson, and uh, he, he, he often is, is a very accurate scholar, a very accurate Greek uh, translator. But he, he tries to put it into 21st century language uh, to help us to, to fully understand. So um, the passage Eugene has entitled, You're not in the driver's seat. You are not in the driver's seat. Listen to what happens next. Then Jesus made it clear to his disciples that it was now necessary for him to go to Jerusalem, submit to an ordeal of suffering at the hands of the religious leaders, to be killed and then on the third day to be raised up alive. Peter took him in hand, protesting, impossible master, that can never be. But Jesus did not swerve. Peter, get out of my way. Get lost. You have no idea how God works. Then Jesus went on to tell his disciples, anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Jesus went on to say, don't run away from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I will show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, of finding yourself, your true self. Amen. And thanks be to God. <coughs> Excuse me. Apologies about that, folks. So there we go. There we have this incredible story where Jesus now speaks to Peter. He has just finished the, the, the time where uh, Peter declared Jesus as the Messiah, where he said, well done, Peter. And now he says to Peter, go away, get away from me. 
And he actually, in some translations, Jesus uses words, get away from me, Satan. He calls Peter Satan. This is a, a roller coaster of a ride for Peter. So what do we learn from this particular passage and this particular story? I actually love the image that, that Eugene shares with us today about Jesus being in the driver's seat. I suppose I like it so much because I love driving. Um, for many years I was a professional driver uh, in different ways and forms from taxis to, to buses to articulated lorries. I used to teach people to drive and as some people in this congregation will know, I am not the best passenger. If Jackie and I go anywhere, even if it's in Jackie's car, guess who drives? It's not that I think Jackie's a bad driver. It's not that I think Jackie's a bad driver. Oh, my battery has gone. Okay. All right. Okay. Pause for thought. Let's see if we can get this up. Online, this will be exciting. Was that really? Is that really exciting? No. How's that? No? No? I'm going to just shout. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Who just knows what's happened here? Okay, here we go. This is the unit. If you're seeing this at home, this is the unit that's just stopped working and it's new and it works really well. But the battery or something has gone dead, so I'll just lift my voice. So when Jackie and I go somewhere, I drive because I like to be in control. Okay? I like to be in control. I like to read the road ahead, to be prepared, to be in the right gear at the right time. I like all of these things. And that's why I think Eugene's analogy that he gives us today about Jesus speaking to Peter is an absolutely fascinating one. What he is saying is, let me drive. Let me be in control. Peter wanted to defend Pete, uh, Jesus. He didn't want Jesus to go to the cross. He said that out of love, out of friendship. But Jesus responds, actually, you have to let me do what God is calling me to do. I have to be in control. And of course that's a lesson that all of us could learn and all of us do learn in the ways of Christ. We have to let God be God. How many of us have been in different positions at different times where we have known that God has said this is the road I want you to go down but we in return have said that might be the road you want me to go down but I'm turning left. I'm going a different way. That's partly the lesson this morning. Let God drive. Let God make the decisions. Now, it doesn't mean we don't respond. Of course we do. But how do we react to this situation where Jesus is actually quite tough on Peter? quite hard on Peter. Have we to expect the same kind of response from Jesus? Is Jesus going to be tough on us when we, when we try to go our own way? When we don't let him drive? Well, to answer that question, I want to jump us forward in time in the stories of Jesus in the Bible. And go to the Easter story, a story that you all 
know and love so well. The story of Easter. Do you remember when Jesus was arrested? Where was Peter? He was hovering around in the background, wasn't he? He was following at a distance. And then someone says to him, you're a follower of Jesus. What does Peter say? I don't know him. Then someone else says, no, no, I saw you with him. No, no, Peter responds, I didn't know him. Again, a third time, a third time, someone says to him, you are, you're a disciple. And Peter says, and he screams, I don't know him. And then the cock crowed and he turned away in shame. Jesus dies. Jesus is resurrected. And then lo and behold, he has a conversation with Peter. Can you imagine that conversation? Uh, I think if I was Peter, I'd be, I'd approach Jesus with my, my shoulders forward, with my head down. Oh, what's he going to say now? So what does Jesus say? He says, do you love me, Peter? Peter says, yes, I love you, Lord. Jesus asks again, do you love me, Peter? Peter replies, yes, I, I love you, Lord. Jesus asks again, do you love me, Peter? And Peter screams out again, yes, you know I love you. And Jesus says, go and feed my sheep. In other words, Jesus says, go and be as Christ to others. Go and speak about the kingdom of God. Go and speak about love, about hope, about forgiveness, about life, about inclusion, about welcome. Go. Because I love you as well. So I think one of the lessons we learn from this passage is yes, Jesus is firmly saying, let God have control. You're not in the driving seat. But when we do take wrong turns, Jesus also makes it very clear that we follow a God of, of whose love for us knows no, no, no end, no limits, who offers us hope, who offers us not just his sacrifice, but offers us salvation. So do not be worried, anxious or upset. But please, let God drive. Let's come before God together in prayer once again. Let us pray. Eternal God, for the times when we have taken control for the times when we have pushed you out of the way. When, for the times when you have given us clear directions, but we have decided to go our own way. For these times, we ask your forgiveness. Gracious God, we do know that when we let you take control of our lives, when we focus on the ways of love, when we keep our eyes firmly fixed on the one who gives hope, the one who offers forgiveness and healing and wholeness, then we know that we are in a good place. So we thank you for the times and for the occasions when we have bathed in your grace, when we have known the peace that passes all human understanding. In our prayer, loving God, we commit ourselves once again to following the ways of Christ, to remembering 
to living and to sharing. In our prayers, loving God, we offer you our thoughts and our hopes and dreams for ourselves and for our families, for our churches. We pray, loving God, in this new way of living that still is very restricted, that we might be enablers of love and of joy, that we might spread the gospel message of peace and of hope. So we pray for ourselves, for our loved ones, and for our churches and the community. We pray for members of congregations who do not feel comfortable enough yet to, to return to a sanctuary. We pray that you will bless them, however it is that they are worshipping. We pray for those people whom we know and whom we love, who are wrestling with life. Perhaps they are grieving, having lost a loved one. Perhaps they are unwell or awaiting test results. We pray for those who are anxious and lonely. We also pray for people that we don't know. The world in chaos. We pray for those who are seeking asylum. We pray for those who are fleeing persecution. We pray for those who are hungry or have no resources or no opportunity to receive medical treatment. We pray for those who are living in homes or community close at hand or all over the world who are fearful because home for them is not a safe place. We pray for those who, because of the reper repercussions of the pandemic, are, are perhaps losing so much. Losing financially, for those who are losing their jobs, for those who are losing relationship. Loving God, we pray for healing and for wholeness, and of course we give you thanks for those people who are doing all that they can to keep us and your world safe. So now, loving God, in the silence, we offer to you our private and our personal prayers. Hear us as we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you now, if you're able, to please be upstanding as we have the benediction. So now go in peace, and may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you, but also with those whom you love, whether they are in this world or in the next. Now and forevermore we will pray. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat>